Jesus' Commandment Have you fully considered Jesus' commandment under the New Covenant? See John 13 34 to 35. Aside from the task known as the Great Commission, this is the only commandment given by the Lord for His disciples to fulfill. And because it is a commandment, I call it the Law of Grace. I would think it is for nothing had He not commanded it. In John 15 9-10, He tells us its significance. The passage explains, it is important to us for it will tell on our good standing on the faith that saves. See screen. Jesus tells us, if there is anything that can cast us off from his love, it is this, keeping his commands. Setting himself as an example in terms of his abidance in his Father's love, in turn, our abidance in him will enable us to withstand difficulties, thereby leading the fullest possible joy that can be had, in facing whatever our trials may bring in life. John 15:11. In John 15 12 to 14, he specifically states his only commandment. Jesus tells us, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. For more on this topic, Please look into the vlog entitled The Vine and the branches on the description section below. Before we move on, may I remind everyone to tap on the subscribe button below, so that we may all together follow and grow in the knowledge of the truth through the posts on this channel. You may also like or share and place your comments on the comment section. Just be nice and respectful to everyone, you may now tap notification bell. Looking into the four gospel books, we'll find the principle behind Jesus' command. Back then, he was asked what is the greatest commandment in the law. He then responded by quoting from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 6.5. He added a second commandment which is just like it, whereof he quoted Leviticus 19.18. It is on these two commands, he says hangs all the laws and the prophets. In other words, the moral gist of the whole of the Old Testament is love. There is no other way that any law or performance of it has any value except love, thus it is the very core of it. Now take note of the second commandment, this is the commandment he gave us to fulfill. Matthew 22:37-40. Relative to the second commandment, Paul in his letter explains why it is the very soul of the old covenant law, see Romans 13 8-10 on the screen. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. In short, in obeying the command, we shall fulfill the righteous requirement of the law. In the original text, we find that word love in Greek text agapeo, meaning the universal love of God. Universal means applicable to all cases, Jesus explains it simply. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Now John in his own words explains in his letter concerning Jesus' commandment in this manner. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. 
He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. With all that being said, what did we learn? Well, to be credited with righteousness on the basis of faith, not by works of the law, would mean that we should have this love in us. As we know, apart from Jesus we cannot do anything, hence we need to be in his love. Now for us to remain and not separate in the love that is in Christ Jesus. We must keep Jesus' command. For more on this topic, please check out the vlog entitled Rightly Dividing the Truth on the description section below. There is something more we need to know about the word love. We all know the original text of the New Testament Bible is written in Greek. Now there is a reason why this is so. Unlike other language like English, Greek is rich in vocabulary. Take for example the word love in English, the word is all in all. However, in Greek there are seven different words for love. Let's give some time in knowing each word, perhaps it might even interest you to identify which of these words speak to you the most. Eros is passionate love between life partners. In time this may turn into pragma, it's love built on commitment, understanding, and long-term best interests, like building a family. It is everlasting love rooted in companionship. Phileo is intimate, authentic friendship, it is characterized by intimacy, knowing, and soul-to-soul -soul bonds. This love is also based on goodwill, or wanting what's best for the other person. Storge is unconditional, familial love, it is the protective, kinship-based love you likely experience with family members, for instance, a mother's love for a child. Storge can also describe a sense of patriotism toward a country, or allegiance to the same team. Philosia, self-love is hardly a new concept, as evidenced by the ancient Greeks having a word to describe it, philosia. It encompasses two concepts, the first is that healthy, feeling myself, care-based love that reinforces self-esteem, like buying or treating yourself as a reward or a gift for hard work. The other concept is one of selfishness that can be a pleasure, and fame-seeking and highly concerned with status. It can even be the foundation of narcissism. Next is Lotus. Playful, flirtatious love, it is infatuation. It describes the situation of having a crush. Lotus is definitely the love you'd experience with a fling with zero implications of obligation. Of all the Greek words for love, this one comes without any eros or phileo attachment. And the highest form is agape, the empathetic or unconditional love the love of God. There you are. The kind of love that Jesus commands to his disciples is of course agape. Speaking of that love, I know of some who will have a problem in fulfilling the said command. Here is why, it is said that the people of God are chosen, thus they say everything depends on God's will, not on man's will. On that basis therefore, they believe man doesn't have any part on the matter. Granted, but how can anyone give agape love, without free will, lest it is unreal? For that topic, please view the vlog entitled Circumcision Made Without Hands in the description section below. In the 21st chapter of the Gospel of John, it portrays a scene that has been commonly linked to Peter's three acts of denial. Interestingly, although the other versions of the Gospel contain this, only the Gospel of John has coverage on the scenario, whereat Jesus asks Peter do you love me three times? This was how it went, in the first two times that Jesus asks Peter, he used the Greek word agape, and although in both times, Peter replied in the affirmative, he however used the Greek word, phileo, which implies loving yet in a more friendly, limited way. Nevertheless, Jesus tells him to feed and tend his sheep. On the third time, perhaps, not receiving the expected answer, Jesus shifts from agape to phileo. Peter noticed that Jesus used the very same word, which was the lower verb form phileo, hence, he was grieved.
but still he responded using the word phileo. And Jesus tells him again feed my sheep. Thereafter Jesus tells Peter his upcoming responsibilities, and even advised the manner of hardship and death which Peter shall undergo performing the task. At this point, the question to ask is, filling the shoes of tending and feeding the flock, body of Christ, would Peter be able to fulfill the task, with a mere, phileo, kind of love, in his heart for the Lord? I don't think so either. But now that it's known how he had delivered what he was asked to do in his lifetime, I would say, in time, Peter indeed shifted his heart to agape love. For as Jesus said, no one can do anything apart from him, and unless he commits to his command, to love in the highest form, agape, he cannot remain in him, and therefore not accomplish anything he was asked to do. Finally, let us have some guiding words of wisdom from the Apostle John, he tells us. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar, for how can he, who does not love his brother whom he has seen, can love God whom he has not seen? That is one we shouldn't miss. Now let's use our spiritual eyes to gain more insight from the passage. Ever come to think? Why the love for God comes before the love for brethren? Well, that dawned on me on encountering the greatest commandment in Matthew 22. It is not that he loved us first, but it's actually what he expects in return, before anything else, and that is nothing less than the same form of love he gave. And for that, it is but natural that anyone who has never known his love wouldn't be able to give such love to him, or to anyone else for that matter. As it is, only from God do we receive agape. And as for the other verb forms of love? Well, we learn those as we practice them with one another. Hence it is said in 1 John 4 8 that he who does not agape does not know God. Now, check out the rest of the passage, see screen, this is the commandment we have from him, that he who agape God must agape his brother also. For other related videos in this YouTube channel, I invite you to access the provided links found in the description section below. God bless and I'll see you soon.